right, I'm here at the Bandai booth. I was at the Bluefin booth before, and they're Bandai-ish. Now I'm at the Bandai Bandai booth. And I am here with uh, a gentleman with a very fine hat. Uh, oh, it's a Tyrannosaurus hat. That's topical. And he's wearing a Power Rangers t-shirt. Bandai do Power Rangers. Um, if you could introduce yourself to the audience, because uh, I just met you about two seconds ago. It's more like 10 seconds. We go way back, but uh, uh, yeah, yeah. my name's Greg Mitchell. I'm a marketing director for Bandai. We are the uh, master toy partner for Power Rangers. So we make all the great figures, role play toys, as well as all the great Megazords and Zord vehicles. And uh, so you guys have been doing Power Rangers for, uh, you're hitting an anniversary now of 20 years. That's right. And uh, Bandai of America's basically been tr like, that first was kind of porting over uh, Bandai of Japan figures, and now you've moved more into doing original figures for stateside. That's correct. Uh, with this anniversary, clearly you guys are excited about the anniversary, uh, the anniversary series that's going on, uh, the franchise anniversary. So you got you've plenty of interesting looking products here. Like I can see the the Ranger Key gimmick has been ported over. Yep. Um, That'll be for uh, next year for Super Mega Force. Very cool. My my main question is because I've never gotten to talk to anyone from Bandai of America, so I've been spectating this whole time. Nice. Uh, and I'm I'm one of the older collectors who uh, you know is into the Japanese and American side of things. So uh, as the transition happened, um, what is the motivation for doing your own original take on uh, on the toy lines as opposed to the old the old way of, of just porting over the Japanese molds? Um, like I saw, I know it's been happening for some years now, and uh, it, it makes it more exciting for me to watch because now I'm kind of like, all right, I want to see what the permutation is. So for instance, on the on the Ranger Key gimmick. Gotcha. And, uh, so is, is it is it just does it work better for you guys to, to do your own thing? Uh, I think so. There's certain different there are different elements of the Japanese market to the U.S. market. Uh, funnily enough, the action figure business there isn't as big. Uh, as ours is, yeah. so we have to do. We have to make different considerations and uh, judgment calls on uh, which products to to work with, and then which ones to kind of put our own American twist on. Yeah, and it, I mean, it, it's really cool that the the gimmicks being brought over, you know, full force because the the base series Go Kaiger was a very fan friendly one, having all these throwbacks, and yeah, uh, so it's a great matchup for the anniversary. Um, so you guys, it looks like you're doing a whole lot of, of, at least in America, throwback stuff. Like I'm seeing like samurai dudes, I'm seeing Mighty Morphin dudes everywhere. Yeah. Um, well, the, the property's now 20 years old, right? So, you know, if you were a, a younger kid, you're now an adult, you love this stuff, you want to revisit it. Uh, you, you probably have the original stuff still, but if you want the, uh, the new twist or the new uh, loving take on it, uh, it's perfect time for it. Um, we do a lot of great stuff, a lot of die cast parts when we do, like for next year for instance, um, we're going to have uh, the, the green the dragon sword, we're going to have the dragon sword, you know, dinosaur looking uh, that, that's Megazord. Been, that's been long awaited since what, 2010 when yeah. the first Legacy Megazord came out. Yeah, and uh, uh, it's cool because we have the Legacy Megazord, we're going to have obviously the dragon sword, and if you remember there was also another massive Megazord in the Mighty Morphin series that would complete the whole picture, and we're looking at maybe doing him. Not, and the not distant future as well. Yeah, like that's a that's a one of those solid hypotheticals, as they say. Yes. <laughs> yeah, and with the 20th anniversary being so important, and especially next year for Go Kaiju fans who know, okay. you're going to see the Rangers of you know the past years interacting now uh, with the newer Rangers. It, it just makes for a very exciting time for okay. younger fans as well as older fans. Yeah, and uh, and I mean the the, the collector oriented stuff like the the legacy toys. I suppose that's the the brand for the collector stuff. Yeah. Um, now the Dragon Zord is very exciting to see. It's the first time I've seen a physical version of that Dragon Zord. Um, the Dragon Dagger. Uh, do you have any uh, comment on like the, what the functionality will be like? Because I've been looking at that thing. I love the size. Yes. Uh, of course. I mean, a bunch of us were like, I wonder if the blade's going to be die cast. Um, but as far, as far as like functionality, is it going to be like you hit the flute buttons and you get the flute noises or? So. You have to actually get the real, true experience. You have to hold it up to your face, and you have to have your fingers on the on the flute buttons. But there's also a chin-activated button. So as you put it to your face, the chin button will actually activate the song. This so is that way you really rather than have to put your mouth on it. Yeah. It's the next best thing to get that truly authentic. Put it up to your face, just like the Green Ranger, and then play it. That's the first time in the toy industry I've ever heard the phrase "chin-activated button." That's right. So uh, you had, used to used to have a swivel arm, battle grip, and kung fu grip. Now you have chin-activated. That's that, that's a pretty big win. Uh, I got to give a high five to Bandai for that. <laughs> 
And uh, the other thing I saw there, uh, it looks like maybe a throwback to uh, old like Shogun Warriors, that Jumbo Megazord. Yeah. Um, it looks like it's still very much in concept stage. Uh, are you guys aiming to do that in final, or is it looking like it might end up being plastic? It's still too early to say for now, uh, but what we want to do is we want to make it the most awesome collector grade type of material as possible, while also, of course, making it not uh, unaffordable. Yeah. So we'll have more news on that in the future, but yeah, we have a big grayscale model here in our cabinet. I'm sure you got some B-roll of it. Oh yeah, it, it looks kick-ass. It reminds me a lot of Shogun Warriors. Me uh, too. Which, which which just makes me think vinyl immediately. Like it's got the, the beefy bulbous proportions. Yeah. It, it looks like it would have that vinyl uh, this mush when you squeeze it a little bit. Uh, like vinyl, you can throw it at someone. You probably won't kill them with it. Um, <laughs> well, stay tuned and you'll find out. <laughs> The, uh, the other big question in regards to the use of Gokaiger, because, I mean, Gokaiger, when it came out in Japan, a lot of older fans were kind of like, can this even be used? I mean, the same question was, was the same for Shinkenger with the kanji symbols everywhere. Clearly, that was fine. Uh, with Gokaiger, the, the, the big question is the use of older pre-Mighty uh, Morphin suits, I suppose, uh, from, from older series in Japan from the 70s, the 80s. Right. Um, is, 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 I mean, that stuff doesn't look like it's going to be manifesting on the toy end at all. Uh, like, it looks like you guys are focusing more on, on just what was stateside. Yeah, for, for the U.S., uh, Saban and Bandai will, of course, focus on the Rangers, or the, the time period of Rangers that uh, resonates the most. And, of course, that was Mighty Morphin onward. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so I can't comment on how this series will be tailored narrative-wise or who will be in it and who won't. But, uh, but Saban will be releasing that information over time over the next couple of weeks leading into, uh, I believe, the series premiere sometime during the first quarter of 2014. Okay. And it'll be on Nickelodeon. Nickelodeon? That's a TV channel. Yes. <laughs> uh, I'd ask you what channel number it is, but I suppose that varies from state it's to state. It's going to vary everywhere. Darn. I'm not that clever. <laughs> All right, cool. Yeah, I, I was mostly asking because I was wondering if you guys had been looking at all. Like, I know that uh, with the trading cards that are going on right now, which stem from the the old the Gamba Ride trading cards in Japan, every now and then, like, cause it looks like you guys have a lot of, or, you know, you're sharing a lot of the really cool artwork they did uh, for those cards, and a couple of little nods have snuck in here and there, like the uh, was it 1971 Pink Ranger. Uh, is in the background of a card somewhere. You know your stuff, man. I, I, just, I hear this from people. <laughs> I hear this from people, and they say, so what's going to happen? And I say, well, speaking as a representative of Bandai, I'm... <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, it's, it's really cool to see you guys kind of really dipping your fingers more into the collector end of things. Uh, I've been seeing that from a couple companies, actually, uh, of late. Bandai of America, Playmates, are all, it seems like there's a lot more confidence in being able to create a product that'll be on shelves at the big box retailers right. that is not uh, just by happenstance for collectors, but instead is looking them square in the eye. I mean, it's, it's, it's easy math. We all grew up doing this together, right? And um, we all grew up as fans of these properties, so it makes perfect sense that we can now revisit them and, and love them, you know, in our 20s and 30s, because, you know, I did the same thing as I was growing up, whether it was Star Wars, G.I. Joe, Transformers, even in Humanoids. But um, I babysat for kids who had Power Rangers. I was just a little too old for the property. But yeah, they loved it. And now these kids are now in their 20s, post-college. They got their first good jobs. And, you know, before, before their girlfriends or wives kick them, uh, kick them to the curb, they're filling up the apartment or the house with like really cool collectibles. And we love that. And cool. the, the important thing, too, is we all grew up with this stuff. And we all have a lot of love and respect for it, too. Our Japanese team, uh, they grew up with it, you know, as, as the Sente series. And they know what fans love because they're, they're fans themselves. Yeah, and, and uh, the thing that I've been enjoying about your guys' take on the toys is seeing almost a more affordable, uh, like Walmart friendly take, especially That's on the it. Megazords. That's I it. just uh, saw some coverage of the Gosei Ultimate Megazord, and uh, the person doing the review uh, made a very good point of this is a like $30, $40 toy here. This was a like $80, $90 toy pre shipping yep. in Japan. Yep. Um, so I've, I've been like, I haven't really been uh, collecting a whole lot of it, but I love watching and seeing the uh, robust playability oh, no, existing in these, like, you know, a budget isn't the right word, but more, more slimline price points. And, and I don't think this, the product suffers for it either. Uh, if you look at the Zord, you mentioned the Megazord. You look at the Megazords and the whole Zord Builder line, the way it all works together, the way it's sturdy and robust, and you can like pull it apart and then put different things together to make all new, weird, never even seen them before type of Megazords. It's really cool. And to your point, it's more affordable for the American consumer. Yeah. Um, which doesn't take anything away from the great Japanese product. If anything, we've got fans who are buying them both. 
which is awesome. Yeah. Uh, I guess my, my last line of questioning is really just more along the lines of your partnerships with other companies. Um, I've, I've you know spent a whole lot of time at the Bluefin booth. Yeah. Because uh, you know that that's pretty much like Bandai of Japan's collector department, just landing in America and going, "Yo, what's up?" Yeah. Um, but you guys, uh, like with with the SH Figure Arts Power Rangers releases, uh, that all kicked off like two years ago with those those uh, Power Rangers Samurai figures, the uh, the red and the gold. Right. Uh, and that seemed like a real interesting thing to happen, like this this kind of linkage between America and Japan that we hadn't seen before. Two years later, we've got. Uh, Bluefin just handling it. They've you know doing new packaging. They've got uh, they've they changed the Hurricaneer figures to Ninja Storm. They're doing Operation Overdrive version of the Bokengers. Um, did, like did that relationship just kind of just naturally explode once you guys kicked off those Samurai releases in Toys R Us? Or? Yeah, I think so. I think that it's one of these things where it's not like a, it's a licensed property that gets split across a number of different types of companies, which is the usual toy business model. Uh, in this case, you've got this core company, Bandai, you know, one of the largest toy companies in the world, um, applying its love, its knowledge, and its depth of resources to the property at pretty much every price point now. And those collector figures are out of out of this world, man. I love them. Um, we're fans of them, too. I mean, I'm trying to get my hands on those Daft Punk figures as soon as they yeah. come out, you know? <laughs> I know the guy who designed them, and he even can't even get me one. Um, but yeah, it's just a love, it's just a love for what we do, and also the, the smart way of doing it super high-end beautiful stuff rather than farming it out to some other company you know why shouldn't we do it as a big yeah. you know Nam uh, Namco Bandai family well it's, it's really interesting seeing Bandai of Japan almost operating autonomously in America through Bluefin uh, almost like you know instead of crowding your guys' umbrella with you guys are doing the, the you know the kids toys right and uh, trying to stuff figure arts in with that um, it, it, uh, it, it's a cool setup to watch um, it, but it sounds like Primarily now, Bluefin's handling the distribution of the figure arts, so it's yep. kind of out of your guys' hands now. Yeah. And um, yeah, that was, that was the main line of questioning, guys. <laughs> and as you see, we, blue, we keep it in this family. So you know, Namco Bandai is right there. I'm sorry, Bandai Namco is right there. Bandai's here. Bluefin, Tamashi Nations, right there. So uh, we're a, we're a good tight family. We, there's a reason we all came this close together and shared this space together. Yeah. And uh, we're glad you guys appreciate all the efforts. Oh, cool. Yeah, my, uh, I guess the only other thing I can think of is, aside from Power Rangers, is there anything else going on at Band of America uh, as far as toys right now? Or Yeah, I mean, we're, uh, we've are we been the master partner for Godzilla for many, many years, and so we're doing not only the classic collector Godzilla, but also for the Godzilla movie from Sony and Legendary. Like the upcoming um, one? Or? Yeah. I was, I, I was about to ask you about yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> so we're the master toy partner for that. Um, we've also got some stuff that's just starting to percolate at Toy Fair now for the retailers that will be announced in February that... Um, one really excellent, exciting, big partnership, especially that I cannot talk about right now. <laughs> but keep your eye out for New York Toy Fair in February, and okay. all the announcements will come out, and you'll see some really some cool stuff. Cool. Um, and we're also relaunching Tamagotchi. Really? Yes. Tamagotchi for the new age. <laughs> so keep your eye on that one, too. You're going to see a lot of press on that one, and uh, uh, um, TV commercials and everything. Oh, cool. I, that, that was way back. I, I, I very big. I remember... The, before any one I knew had one, the discussion was like, oh so when, when when you kill your Tamagotchi, is it like, does the machine explode afterwards, or, <laughs> or what? <laughs> I've, um, I neglected several in my young life, and uh, you know what? The, the, the toy never explodes. We don't ship exploding toys. Band of America's guarantee. Guarantee. It's, it's funny you say that, we probably have, I've worked with and for a number of toy companies in the past uh, 10, 12 years, and um, nobody has, the uh, the kind of customer service team that uh, that Bandai does um, really awesome. They they answer quickly. They're effective and helpful, and they'll help you either fix your toy or they'll help you replace it and get new parts for it. Cool. Yeah. Um, they, ca they care about their stuff. Where it's part of the mantra of the, the Japanese team. We 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 care about the toys. We want kids to be able to play with them, give them their little brothers, give them to their own sons. So we care about that stuff. Cool. So. And uh, you guys are doing some exclusive stuff here, uh, and going by the large red sold out for today's sign, I'm guessing it's been going well. Yes, indeed, but I can slide out our display copy to show you. Uh, we'll have him back on shelf again tomorrow. Hold on, let me lean down and get the other guy. Oh, all right. Well, we're watching some sick B-roll right now, let me tell you. Uh, <laughs> it's amazing. So <laughs> here is our uh, Tokyo Vinyl Mighty Morphin Red Ranger with the exclusive metallic paint. Uh, he's $25. We sold out today, we sold out yesterday, and we are hoping to sell out again tomorrow. Cool. It comes in this box. Yeah, the, uh, the the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers vinyl stuff I've been seeing on shelves at Toys R Us is kind of interesting because, you know, seeing uh, that kind of art style toy 
uh, after Mighty Mugs, I, I was wondering if anyone else was really going to pick it up and, and get it out to the mass market again. Toys R Us is a great partner like that, yeah. yeah. They, uh, they know that uh, grown-up kids and little kids all like to go and shop there. So, uh, yeah, they've, they've done a good job of keeping... Uh, whether it's collectible vinyl or even some of like our you know our friends out there like the McFarlands of the world and NECA's of the world, you yeah. can actually find all that stuff at Toys R Us. Whereas you know there's not enough toy space in Walmart or Target for that kind of stuff. Uh, that that reminds me of uh, just the, the, the this, is, this is less a line of questioning, just more of a, a kind of hand waving in the air. Like imagine this scenario. All right. Um, surely, like because you guys have like do a, a quite a wider range of play patterns and gimmicks with Power Rangers toys, and there are a lot of robots and monsters involved. Um, specifically, there's a film where a lot of people have been kind of saying, where are all the toys? Because there are a few, but they're like, where are the rocket punch toys? Where are the, the plasma shooting rocket fist toys? Ah. Um, a lot of people came out of Pacific Rim wondering where, you know, the, 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 that movie felt so quietly toyetic. Right. And uh, I'm, I'm, yeah, it sounds like you've seen it. I, yeah, uh, <laughs> and it's funny because, uh, you know, before it was released, they were, of course, try, looking to do licensing programs with a number of different toy companies. And uh, for whatever reason, I don't, I don't know if it ever came together. And I worked at a toy company before where we were looking at it as well. Um, and that's the first thing that came to our mind, too. We all thought of, to your point before, Shogun Warriors. This, yeah. those, those big jaw-dropping things that make kids just go, whoa, and yeah, launching I, I, fists I, and all that. Spinning hand Crimson Typhoon. Like, not even collector-grade toys. Like, the whole movie is so filled with just things I expect to see on a $10 off-the-shelf toy. Like, you know, uh, Cherno Alpha with a, had a spring-loaded punch in its arm. Yeah. Um, so, like, I, I guess uh, I was just going to say, like, if you'd seen that movie, did you, did, do, you, do you sometimes see that movie in particular, but maybe anything else where you're kind of like, I wonder, you know, if we had that license, like, what would we... Uh, well, I'll tell, you, I'll tell you when I had that, that epiphany, it was when I was at another company and I saw that there was an opportunity at Bandai for Power Rangers. Uh, knowing full of what everyone was doing here as far as the 20th anniversary and the next couple of years worth of stuff that's kind of coming down the pipeline, I had that same, like, ooh, feeling. That's why, that's why I came here. Yeah. <laughs> so there'll be some cool stuff coming down the pipe from us, for sure. Well, very cool. I'm, I'm glad you guys are, uh, are, are keeping things moving, keeping things changing and evolving. Um, that's the thing I always worry about with long-lived toy companies are, you know, just a stagnation or a uh, falling into a cycle, as it were. I think it was, that was easier to do back in the day, like in the 70s and 80s, but if you go out into the aisles now, it's really fierce competition. The boys' yeah. action aisle, there's new properties that are either based on TV or movies every couple of months. And we're all fighting for the same real estate at these retailers. We all get between one foot to four feet of space in the aisle. So um, you almost can't be play safe anymore. You almost can't be conservative. Yeah. You have to constantly engage your consumer, excite your kids, and even bring in, like I said, the legacy fans like us who grew up with the property. Yeah. You, got, you gotta you gotta take risks and and uh, evolve to keep them excited. And does does that become like a almost a hard sell at times for retailers? Like especially when like you, the Power Rangers is very kid focused for a while, and this legacy stuff was so, was was jaw dropping in a sense because it was Band of America's just reaching out so directly yeah. uh, to the to the older fan base. Uh, did, did you face any kind of like were, were retailers saying, "Are you sure about this? We've been doing well with your kids' toys so long," or? Uh, did, did a real big case have to be made for that stuff? I think the best case scenario for that is Toys R Us. They love it. Uh, this morning we went ahead and did our, um, we went online for a pre-sale for this amazing uh, Legacy Morpher. This is a mass toy company, our mass retailer, and they want to be partners with us on this stuff. So they went live this morning with a pre-sale. We already got feedback from them that it's already selling wonderfully. So, no, not so much. Like, a retailer like Toys R Us who has more space to share, and again, wants you to shop there, wants me to shop there, and our little kids. They love it. Cool. So they love taking the, you can see in the past year, and you're going to see more stuff coming out, that they love the legacy stuff. Yeah, I mean. It's, and we, they see it as a complimentary business to the main kid bread and butter business. Yeah, like clearly they, they were the company, given that most of it's exclusive there, like they, they jumped all over that, it looks like. And they, and you know, their fans too, they come to Comic-Con, they come to Morphicon. They come to San Diego. They see what all all the fans how they react to it, and they know that there's a great business there. Cool. Well, uh, whenever I talk to Bluefin, my card runs out while we're doing the interview. We're about to run out here, so I guess we better uh, put a cap on this one. Uh, I guess let's end off by saying uh, let's hope for for a, a kick-ass Lord Zed toy at some point. That's, uh, that's my personal little wish. I'm going to slip in here. All right. But well, uh, all the fans out there, go to all the forums. Uh, we all read them. Saban reads them. Say. Talk about what you love and what you want. Uh, we're listening. Cool. Well, thanks very much. Thank you, and, guys. And uh, have a good New York Comic Con. Thank you. You too.